one does not simply walk into Mordor. Welcome back, everyone, to Mordor, the land of shadow. You sort of have to say that with evil hands. Uh, I want to welcome you guys back. Uh, today we are premiering our very first Shadowcast, uh, which is where we discuss all things evil in Tolkien's Middle Earth. Um, in today's video, uh, we're going to shine a light on the monster in the cave seen in the trail in the teaser trailer uh, for Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Power of the Rings. Um, but before we dive deep into the second age of Middle-earth, uh, I did want to uh, cover uh, two items that I feel like I just want to, I need to say it and get it out of the way. Um, and then we can move on to uh, this unknown monster in Middle-earth. Uh, and the first thing I need to talk about is mangling pronunciation. I sort of want to get this <clears throat> out of the way because uh, as I'm starting the shadow cast and I'm going to be uh, discussing all things uh, dark in Tolkien's Middle Earth and other aspects of Tolkien's works uh, in the movies and the TV show and the uh, video games, I'm going to be having to pronounce names that I before had just written. So I want, kind of wanted to address this right off the bat. Um, uh, you know, I have been posting content about Tolkien for really the last 25 years. Uh, and it's important to me that, uh, you know, when I would write it, that I wrote it correctly, that uh, it was spelled, had all the right um, uh, accents on all, the, on all the text that I was writing. And now I'm sort of in a situation where, uh, you know, in a vlog, or podcasts that I need to pronounce it correctly. Now, uh, to take you back a little bit, I first read The Lord of the Rings in 1969, 1969 or 70, over the course of that year. And, you know, so for the first 30 years of having read The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and uh, thinking about and discussing Middle Earth, I had no really no phonetic, uh, correct phonetic sounds to go by in terms of how to pronounce uh, the names and places in Middle Earth. Um, it really wasn't until, you know, the advent of the internet, um, but, and really the uh, films by Peter Jackson in 1999, which was really 30 years after I read the books, that uh, the sound and the names of things became much more clear. For instance, uh, I know a lot of people used to call Sauron, Suron. Uh, Kirithungal, the tower of Kirithungal was called Sirithungal because it had a C. And, it, you know, at the time I didn't realize that, you know, that C is really a K sound. Uh, even Tolkien's name can be a bit tricky. Uh, for years, I, I said Tolkien, because that's how it was, that's how I heard it from everyone who talked about it, who uh, spoke about Tolkien. They all said Tolkien. However, Tolkien himself wanted it to be Tolkien. That was the correct pronunciation of his name. So there's a good possibility that I'm going to go back and forth on that because I sometimes will go back to uh, how I said it in the past, and I try to be cognizant of that in these uh, new shadow casts. Uh, but bear with me, um, because um, you know I know from Tolkien's point of view that uh, language uh, and phonetics was everything to him. In fact, language was the source of all the histories and eventually the stories uh, of Middle Earth that. Uh, Tolkien developed in uh, The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. So um, there's uh, 101 examples uh, just like that, um, that, you know, uh, you know, when I'm doing this podcast is sure to kind of come out and be a part of 
uh, the mispronunciation uh, that, that, that I'm going to do here. So just please, uh, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there and uh, and for you to please bear with me. Correct me if it's really, if I'm really mangling it badly. Uh, it's not that I don't know Tolkien. It's that, or Middle Earth, or have had experience with it. It's that I just haven't had to pronounce it uh, live or in uh, in a video format or a vlog format before. So uh, please just bear with me and uh, let's go ahead and move on to the second important topic that I wanted to discuss today. I wanna offer up an update on thelandofshadow.com, the website. Uh, for years, I ran the main site and filled it with all things dark in Middle Earth. Uh, you know, we had the Dark Servants, the Dark Domains, which is the locations in Middle-earth, uh, the Brazen Beasts, the Black Speech, Dark Films, and many, many other things, uh, as well as, a da as daily blog posts. Um, as I had said in, a, in my previous video, where I kind of made the announcement of the website, which you can take a peek at here, um, I closed the site down in 2018 and now I'm in the process of sort of rebuilding it. Um, you can get all the details on why that was, um, but there's a couple of things uh, I need to do before I can uh, start that rebuilding process. Um, the uh, I need to uh, contact my web host and work out a couple of things with them in terms of the domain, you know, where it's leading, uh, and the web and the content that was there previously, I want to make sure that that content is still there so I can access parts of it. Um, I also have a mirror copy on my own computer. So as I begin to edit it, I'll upload that to the site. Um, I think I'm going to veer more in the direction of making it a, a wiki, sort of a Mordor wiki site about all things dark in Middle Earth rather than a uh, blog, a daily blogging site. I'll still have the blog posts in there, but really it'll just to be about uh, what the new content is. And I can do a lot of the discussion right here on the YouTube channel uh, for whatever uh, things I want to discuss in terms of the show reviews uh, and you know different items I might I'm, I'm planning to discuss here. Um, so uh, after I contact the web host and square that away, um, I'll probably begin to upload um, different parts of the site, test it out. Um, as things become available, I'll announce, it, I'll announce it here or as a blog post on the site. Um, I think there was an impression when I made the announcement that the site was coming straight back up and it's just I'm just not ready for that yet. I haven't set a date. Um, it may seem far off, but I was thinking of uh, Halloween as a great uh, day to kick off Mordor, but that may be too far into the future. I may be able to have something sooner, or at least parts, pieces and parts of it sooner, uh, with maybe the major site coming online again uh, on October 31st of All Hallows' Eve. So, anyway, I think that kind of covers the two items I wanted to discuss before we got started. And uh, now we're ready to get to the main event. In today's Shadowcast, uh, I want to focus on the monster seen in the new teaser trailer uh, for The Rings of Power. I'm sure you've seen the trailer countless times already. Um, and but in order to discuss this the the appearance of this mo monster, I sort of want to set the stage. Uh, the first thing we see uh, related to this monster, I think I'm not 100% sure, but the way I kind of interpret the trailer or the teaser is that uh, we see landscape of a, a mountainous landscape with a, a frozen waterfall. Then we switch over. The next shot is a Galadriel climbing up a ice cliff, which I assume is the same location. Um, and then later on, we cut to another elf that I am not 100% sure is Galadriel. I don't, she looks a little different, uh, but she's holding a uh, torch and out of the shadows comes this creature. 
Now it has been verified that Galadriel and the other elves traveling with her uh, were going through the icy mountains of the, the Forward Wave. Uh, this is a mountain range at the very uh, top of the map on middle, of Middle Earth. Um, why they're traveling here is not certain. However, it has been confirmed that that is where this takes place, these shots. Um, something tells me that she believes, or perhaps maybe the other elves believe, that there is an evil once more stirring in Middle-earth. Uh, sometime during the middle of the Second Age, Mount Gundabad, which was the sacred home of Durin the Deathless, um, was captured by the orcs and the other dark creatures that had survived the fall of the first Dark Lord, Morgoth. Um, it's possible that this group of elves has been sent out to find uh, a hidden evil there. Perhaps there's been some signs that uh, some evil is rising up again and it's evident in these mountains. So they have been sent there to uh, discover what that is. And maybe it's at Gundabad that they are discovering that. Now, I think the... the, the um, the orcs taking over Gundabad actually occurred a little bit later in the Second Age than uh, when the Rings of Power were made. So I don't know if they would start out with that, but maybe, you know, I'm sure the time frames are going to be muddied a little bit for the show, just like they were in the films by Peter Jackson uh, to kind of speed things up and bring all the elements together within a reasonable time frame. I can't say for sure. Uh, Sauron may have been involved, but it is possible because also during the same period of time, he was beginning to rise up again and out of his fear of the strength of Numenor, which was growing at that time. And uh, it was at that, and during that period that um, Sauron uh, discovered Mordor and began to create his stronghold there. You know, he, he found the mountain of fire where he could forge a ring of power. And he also began building Badadur at that time. Okay, now we come to the monster. And here he is in a successive set of frames showing what he looks like as he sort of launches himself at this elf out of the shadows. Um, my first impression is that, to me, it looks a little bit too CGI for my tastes. Uh, more like the the uh, the CGI in the Hobbit films than that of the Lord of the Rings, which looked a little bit more real to me. Uh, granted, we only get a mere few seconds to view this creature, uh, but still, um, it just feels a little uh, uh, CGI computery to me. Um, the design of the creature is also kind of strange. Um, all this stuff around the mouth, the tusks or uh, horns or whatever it is coming around the mouth, it just seems a little strange the way they're bent over on each other. It, I'm not sure. It just looks a little weird to me. Um, but I'm not going to pass judgment on that until I see more. You know, well, hopefully we'll see more in the, in the full trailer. Now, when the trailer first came out, there were a lot of people who thought or reported that this creature had two mouths, which would have been very strange. Uh, and I think they were just incorrect. It was, you know, when the video first came out, there's usually a low res version that they post first and then they follow that up with the higher res version. And you can clearly see that it's not a second mouth, but it's actually a beard that's hanging down that's covered in ice. Um, also, the uh, back of the creature, I don't know if it's its actual back or with hair or whether it's wearing some kind of fur or coat, uh, is also encrusted with ice, which sort of ties it, for me, ties it together with the images of, of Galadriel climbing up uh, the mountainside. And I, I assume that probably they come to some kind of cave. Uh, which, looking at the cave, it looks like to me that it is a, a location that, you know, it's not like a natural cave. It looks to me like it was something carved out, like it might be the inside of a temple or uh, some kind of space 
Uh, maybe it's somehow related. You know, Karn Dune, of course, has not been created yet. That will come later in the middle of the uh, Third Age. But, um, you know, Mount Gundabad is there, so it could be maybe an orc stronghold of some kind. I don't know. Possible. Okay, so what is this creature? What is this monster? Um, it's definitely one of the Dark Servants created by Morgoth in the First Age of Middle-earth. Um, it's, uh, you can definitely see that it's a creature of evil. And of course, since it's attacking an elf, uh, we're, you know, we're pretty sure that it would be a creature that would be from, uh, that was probably created in the dungeons of the, the first Dark Lord. Now, I've been reading online to see uh, what other people's theories are, and I have noted that probably the most overwhelming description is that this is some form of cave troll. However, I just am not getting a cave troll vibe on this at all. For instance, it's it seems too small to me, and this whole thing with the horns around the mouth just <clears throat> does not lend itself, in my opinion, to one of the cave trolls. Now, I guess they may have evolved over the course of, you know, six or 7,000 years, uh, and it may be uh, some variation of troll that we haven't seen before. Uh, but for me, it just doesn't say cave troll. I'm just I'm not buying that at this point. Others have theorized that it might be one of the ogres. Uh, now, this dark creature um, is mentioned by uh, Tolkien in uh, in other places, not necessarily the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Um, and uh, Peter Jackson used these creatures, as you can see here, in his version of the Hobbit, um, the Battle of Five Armies, I think is the first time we actually see these uh, ogres that they, his version of them look more human, uh, sort of troll-like, but some, something between an orc and a, and a troll. Um, but again, it has nothing around here, around the mouth, none of the hair or the beard or, you know, the tusks. So I just, again, don't think that ogre is the origin of this creature. I've even heard that uh, some people were thinking that it might be some variation uh, on the Balrog or one of the uh, Balrogs of, of Morgoth. Um, now, you know, I, th there's a kind of a funny element for well, right off the bat. We don't see any fire. Uh, the horns look different. There are horns on the face, of course, but it looks very different. Uh, and the size, of course, would be an issue, which kind of brings me to a funny uh, idea here is that maybe this is a baby Balrog. Now, if Star Wars can have a baby Yoda, why can't Lord of the Rings have a baby Balrog? Um, you know, I, I'm just sort of kidding. You know, I don't want to start a whole... Uh, thing about that, you know, I'm just, it's sort of, that's sort of a joke, but it is kind of an interesting idea. Um, you know, you'd have to have some kind of fireproof gloves uh, to hold a baby Balrog because I'm, otherwise I'm sure you'd get burnt. Uh, but anyway, um, that's just more of a joke than any real supposition about what this uh, monster might be. Now, this is a very remote possibility, uh, but the one that I, it's one that I kind of like, um, it um, might it not be a borrow weight. Um, we didn't get to see these creatures in the Lord of the Rings, so maybe this is our first look at one. Uh, possible again, maybe, uh, probably not likely. But I kind of like the idea of ha of uh, getting our first opportunity to see one of these creatures that didn't appear in the Lord of the Rings, uh, even though it was part of the story. However, <clears throat> when all said and done, I believe we are looking at something altogether new. All manner of monsters were created uh, in the dungeons of the first Dark Lord Morgoth. Uh, so it could be anything. It really could be any kind of creature at all, something totally new. Uh, if it is, uh, I hope that they are able to bring it li to life in a way that that it fits within the... the uh, the confines of Tolkien's world. So I guess at this point, I want to ask you guys, what do you think? 
uh, in the comments section below, why don't you let me know what you think this monster is? Uh, and if you have your own ideas or theories, I'd love to hear them. Uh, maybe I can bring it up in the next uh, shadow cast uh, and sort of pinpoint some of those ideas you've come up, especially if it's something unique or interesting that uh, I didn't cover here in today's uh, video. In the next shadow cast, I'm going to be discussing the rise of Sauron in the Second Age. Uh, when he takes on the guise of Anatar, Lord of Gifts, uh, in order to, to seduce the elves and create the, the rings of power. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed our very first shadow cast, uh, and I hope you'll join me uh, on this journey through the land of shadow. Uh, I'm going to try to do this every week. It might be every two weeks occasionally, but I'm going to start in the beginning trying to do one every Friday, premiering every Friday. So I hope you enjoyed it uh, and it was informative and got you thinking about what this creature in, in uh, the new teaser trailer for The Rings of Power might be. I hope it gets you excited about all things dark in Middle Earth. Um, and until the next video, um, I will meet you on the heights of the Morgul Pass at the Tower of Kirithum.